welcome back to my channel um so today's video isn't going to be a layover vlog it's going to be for all my little ab nerds out there just like me who are super interested in aviation maybe even before getting into it um so this video is a little bit different but what i thought i would talk about today would be airline jargon so um <laughs> Obviously, a lot of industries have their own jargon, they have their own language that they use, but I think airlines especially are very famous for it. So I've written down some words which I think might be quite interesting if you're an inspiring flight attendant or you, if you just want to know what some of those PAs and things mean um, when you're on an aircraft. So a um, huge one we have in um, aviation first of all is SOPs so SOPs stands for standard operating procedures so these are the procedures that we need to follow every single day and these do make our aircraft and our like daily life more safe um, these can be things such as arming and disarming your door which again a bit more jargon I will go into um, but also things like preparing the cabin for landing making sure the aisles and exits are clear for an evacuation and things like that Okay, so these are known as our standard operating procedures or SOPs. Now, I did mention then that we have arming and disarming at doors. Um, pretty much every airline will have this. There will be a PA, everyone will hear it. It's cabin crew, arm doors and cross check or cabin crew, disarm doors and cross check. Now, what this is actually to do is we're not really doing anything to the door. We're actually doing it to the slide that is in or the slide or the slide raft that is in the door. So what that means is once we have armed our door, it means that the slide is armed. So if we do try to then attempt to open that door, the slide will come out, it will deploy. So as you can imagine, this is usually done when you are leaving the terminal, because if anything happens then, the passengers on board will have a way to, an escape, to, a way to escape. Then once you arrive at the terminal, you disarm the slides because you no longer need a way to escape. The passengers will be able to exit via the air bridge or stairs or ground equipment. Okay. Another big one you might hear if you ever hear a crew talking in the galley, it's never usually said in a happy tone, um, would be either EPs or SEPs. Um, as you guys know, I've worked for three different airlines. So in Australia, we do call it EPs, which means emergency procedures. But when I work for Emirates, we call it SEPs, which is safety and emergency procedures. Okay, um, so this is something that we have to do yearly and we do, we study when we commence our job as a cabin crew. Um, it's basically like a test. We have to run through everything. We run through evacuating the aircraft, we run through how to use the emergency equipment. Um, and sometimes we even have to go through our standard operating procedures. This can be done in a written and also a practical test. So yes never usually said in happiness because it is a test and obviously if you do continue to fail these tests you will lose your job um so it is often a stressful time for cabin crew so usually if you hear it it's like oh i have SEPs next roster but yes that's what that stands for okay another one that i think is going to be probably used a lot um, I know I use this for passengers when their screen is broken. We call it IFE, it's in-flight entertainment. Um, I will be like, oh, no worries, the IFE is like this all the time. And I will say it, and not always the passengers know what it is. So if anyone ever does say IFE to you, it just means the screen in the back of your seat, the in-flight entertainment. Another one that we have on board, which is really important, it is to do with our safety and security and our emergency procedures is ABP. So ABP is called our able-bodied passengers. Okay, so this means that when we're boarding and things like that, we should be keeping an open mind. We should be looking for people who will help us in cases of an emergency. Um, I know at Emirates, after they had an incident, they really wanted to emphasize the importance of ABPs because one of the emergency slides had actually blown up on the door um, and then it had stopped, blocked that exit. So that exit was no longer usable. So you wanna look at these people like ABPs because if you do have to evacuate, you do ideally you want people at the bottom of the slide helping people off because a lot of people do get injured in an evacuation. I know sometimes you watch these videos and the slides look fun, but saying, <laughs> It's coming from someone who has been down them. They are higher than you expect and they are quite scary. And the thought of going down one of those slides quickly and into asphalt or a runway terrifies me. But anyway, it's all part of the job. 
Um, another thing that we do have a little bit of a joke on board is we can call these ABPs bobs, also known as babe on board. Another term you might hear is a deadheading or a paxing crew. So this can happen either in new uniform or in casual or in business attire, but it basically is when the airline needs to get you from one port to another. So they will send you as a passenger. Okay, so it just means that you're going as a passenger, but you're technically at work. So um, two different terms I've heard, deadheading and paxing. Another one that is like a myth to me is a ferry flight. If you ever get rusted for a ferry flight, please leave a comment and tell me what it is like. They are like this mystical unicorn that I have never ever seen appear on one of my rosters. So a ferry flight is a flight that needs to go from port A to port B, and they need to have cabin crew on board to operate the doors, but there is no passengers. So you basically get the entire aircraft just to yourself and you're just there to arm and disarm the doors. So maybe that I've put it out there in the universe now, I would get a ferry flight, but I doubt it. Okay, another one guys I find kind of fun is we have two different types of aircraft. You can either call them narrow body or wide body. Easy way to distinguish is the narrow body aircraft usually have one aisle and the wide bodies have two. Speaking just from my personal experience, I really prefer to operate and work on the wide body. I kind of love bigger aircrafts. Um, there's just more crew, more area to move. Um, and usually passengers are just a little bit more comfortable. It gets a bit difficult on the narrow body when you have to move a car up and down for people to go to the bathroom. Um, I do think that puts a lot of pressure on the crew, but also on the passengers. I know when I'm a passenger, I feel really horrible if I have to ask the crew to move or if I feel like I'm getting in their way. Um, so just personally, I prefer wide body aircrafts, but some people require the uh, narrow body. They say they're cozy. Um, I don't see it but it's just a personal, personal preference. Uh, the last one I think I'm gonna leave you with today. I think a lot of people do know what this one means, um, but I have started changing the language that I use in my briefs because I don't think everyone does fully understand what it means. And this word is ditching. So ditchings don't have the best reputation, I would say in the A-lines. Um, it's probably one of the least things that you would ever want to experience or hear is going to be a possibility of happening. So in a ditching, it is an emergency landing on water. So, um, yes, just saying that I have now changed my briefings. When I give infant briefings about the infant life jackets, I no longer say in the case of a ditching, I say in the case of a water landing, um, just to ensure that there's no confusion about what a ditching is. Um, but yes, a ditching is an emergency landing on water. Um, these, I think I've heard in recent years have had more success. Um, but previously have not had the greatest level of success. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed staying with me while I've been talking about aviation jargon. Um, I know this isn't the most interesting topic for a lot of people, but for me, a complete little av nerd, I love this. Um, and it's one thing I really loved. I love studying SAPs or EPs and learning about the aircraft and learning about how much aviation grows through the history and the incidents that have happened in the past. So this is just something fun, I think, just to give people a little bit of extra knowledge about what's going on in the aircraft and things like that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.